Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Early Apex. I'm Rob here at Dylan, and we've got some awesome stuff to talk about today. Little news, little FMK, and to start oh, yeah. it off, um, a little Japanese car culture talk. Uh, yeah, I, you get to flex a little bit, man. You you just went to uh, you just went to Japan. <laughs> yeah, i i had I had the amazing opportunity to go to Japan. And so, yeah, I tried to do as much like car culture stuff as I could without like driving my like non car buddies insane. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do, you, what do you got for me, Dylan? What questions you got here? Well, obviously, I think this is a, a, a fantasy of any JDM fan, right? Who looks up old videos of hot version on YouTube <laughs> and uh lusts over uh those kind of experiences on what it's really like over there so i obviously have some preconceived ideas on what it might be and my first question to you rob i know you did some driving over there how strict did it seem like speed limits were especially like in the mountains i know you got out in the mountains a little bit yeah yeah what was that like I mean, you like everyone like knows Japan as like it's a like a strict law abiding country, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it it isn't because of enforcement. It's just because of like culture and like everyone has been like that's how you're raised and and people mm -hmm. follow the rules basically. Mm -hmm. Like even the dumb rules, like like jaywalking or whatever using mm. you know cross rocks like everyone follows the rules so mm -hmm. to that like there was n i did not see many police on the road at mm -hmm. all like very few police on the road i never saw a cop car like sitting on the side of the road like waiting to catch speeders anywhere really um which is you know obviously a very common sight in all of the united states mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah never saw a cop doing that at all uh and i don't think there's as many like speed cameras or anything like that um for the most part so yeah yeah it was you could speed basically you could speed and there is huh. no one to stop you <laughs> <laughs> all right something we yeah, yeah yeah we would quickly get out of control here in the states because yeah you went on a like a uh a lead driving experience right you yeah, got to yeah. drive so i, a, I did the, the fun to drive uh driving experience which was which was pretty awesome um cool what was that you know definitely so, something aimed at um at tourists hmm. and, you know and, and like it's so essentially it's it's you uh they have these cars to rent like all the you know gtr r34 gtrs Classic mm -hmm. NSXs, um, you know, like old classic STIs. Uh, I had a, a, a Nissan Fairlady Z or basically the Datsun 240Z in America, mm -hmm. um, which was awesome. It had like an RB25 swap with ITBs. It was like tons oh, of character. Man. It was a very cool car. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so that was like a lead thing. And you go through all the um, like famous toge routes of... Uh, <sighs> Of the Japanese mountains, the, like initial D, like made famous, right? Oh man, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. So, um, oh man, I'm blanking on the names of did, these did, roads right did now. Did you but. see a lot of like skid marks? Was it clear that oh yeah, like this is this is a toge that is worn in? There's like a lot of rubber that's been laid down and drifted in a lot of corners or something like that, or, or did the pavement not have a lot of that? Um, there definitely was. I There was like one cool. road I got on. It wasn't on this drive. Uh, it was on another, but like you could see like every single is like back to back like hairpins yep. and every single one was just like laid thick with like tire marks you know <laughs> and i mean it wasn't it's not like that was like everywhere but yeah. they were it was there for sure yeah it was it wasn't just like that you know oh yeah a couple people do this every so often it's like no no, no this was it's not, it probably looked like a track right some of those turns where you can you, you might have like a multi-use track where they have drift events and stuff like that and you've got a decent amount of rubber in some of those turns. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think ultimately, like, it, it really isn't dissimilar from um, 
tail of the dragon in the United States mm. or uh, the canyons in California. Mm-hmm. It, it's super similar. Like it's a, it, you know, there's certain routes that like guys always go to hit like the, the skyways there, just like we have like um, Shenandoah Skyway over on the East mm-hmm. Coast here mm-hmm. or Blue Ridge Parkway. They have literally what they call them skyways as well. And they're, you know, roads kind of designed for like tourism and sightseeing. And they're these incredible, you know, curvy roads. And it it honestly feels a lot like the ones in the States. Mm. But, you know, just with some very different views. Um, okay. Since they've got the mountains that drop right into the ocean and stuff like okay. that. So it's beautiful. Okay. But it is it, it is similar in those ways. And, yeah, the culture is definitely there. And since like people out driving and enjoying it, uh, yeah. So here's a question, changing it a little bit from getting away from more of like the driving experience that you had there and the car spotting. I'm sure obviously just JDM cars <laughs> everywhere. And I know I followed along in your your story. You were doing posts of all these awesome cars. What car and maybe it's hard to narrow it down to a specific car, but what car or like type of car really stood out to you? We're starting to get a lot of stuff here in the States by importing, right? It's not out of the ordinary to see an R32. You know, I just saw one today at the the car show that I went to. So that stuff's cool. But yeah. like, what did you see that, yeah, just like blew your mind? Maybe it wasn't well, a specific car, or like the way it was tuned, like uh, uh, the way that it was yeah, like yeah. done up. What, what did, I feel yeah. like I, I got there and expected to see like way more of like the JDM kind of like legends like on the road, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. just to see old FDR X sevens on the road and, and skylines mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And, and really you don't see it on the road. It's about as rare as to see that type of stuff in America. Like they're just, it's not on the road. Um, like Japanese cultures, uh, is about new stuff. Like for the most mm-hmm. outside of car culture, the Japanese people are like, you buy something new. Why would you get something old? Like, get rid of it. You know, they mm-hmm. they don't see much value in like old things like that. You know, they don't have like a lot technology. of nostalgia, right? For that type of thing, stuff. you know. Mm-hmm. So um, it's really just like in America, it's just the car enthusiast driving that old stuff. But I will say, mm-hmm. you would see like run of the mill like transportation cars with like rims on it everywhere. <laughs> Like everywhere, really? so many cars, huh. like just literally like the equivalent of your like Honda Odyssey van, but it's got rims on it, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. everywhere. Like it was, it was, and it was weird. And it was the summertime too. It's not like they were like winter wheels or something like, no, just yeah. everyone put rims on their car. So I That's thought that was kind of funny. So just like the, the percent of traffic that had some sort of like minor modification was much higher there. Yeah, way, 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 way higher, which I thought was, it was, that was interesting. That was cool. Oh, that's super interesting. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Tons of, there are these vans. We're going to have to, I'm going to have to figure out what it is. We'll put it up, but there are these vans. I think they're like Toyota or something, but they put the cab like basically in front or on top of the engine. So it's Mm -hmm. like the Mm -hmm. cab's like Mm -hmm. over the engine, but it's, it's like a regular, family van like Mm -hmm. sliding doors and stuff but they look really like cool it kind of look like kind of like i don't know future retro and i Mm -hmm. like i saw one with like some t37s on it and like every time (laughs) you saw them they would have like cool rims on them and i was like these things are sweet like this is this is the cool family mover that's cool okay now switching gears again and that's interesting you say that the culture doesn't value the secondhand market do you think that's why there's such a large secondhand market of car parts there in japan um because you you got to visit one of those secondhand uh uh, shops right with car parts yeah i i didn't go to a secondhand place there isn't oh okay yeah yeah there are no stuff interesting yeah, it was all new stuff. Like I, I went to Auto Box or Super Auto Box, like their mm-hmm. flagship store um, mm-hmm. in like Center City, Tokyo, uh, which is like you know, all new stuff. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, I don't know if there is like that huge like secondhand aftermarket. I think it probably like kind of mirrors the states in terms of like what people value like within the community. So you know, is how up, people modify. Yeah. So it's like up garage. That's another aftermarket. Yeah. Um, up, yeah. Up garage and auto box are super similar. 
Um, okay. Both... So up garage is all new stuff. I for some reason this is why this is why we're having this conversation. For some reason I thought it was all used parts. Yeah, up, I think up garage might have some like used stuff, or they have mm-hmm. like a whole used section because it's not like there isn't used stuff there. Like I went to a thrift store in Japan mm-hmm. and it was like absolutely incredible like the quality of the things that were there and how well everything was taken care of and like how well it was That's just like stocked and inventoried in this like thrift store yeah yeah um so it's you know it's there but um mm-hmm. you know uh what's the other one there's up garage uh, super auto box and then there's there another um i feel like there might be one more yeah, Most of I'm what missing. I know is through Mighty Car Mods. Right. Yeah. Is but of going to I would feel like Japan. Up Garage and Super Auto Box is, is mostly kind of like a pumped up Pep Boys. You know, pumped like you boys. can go there and just get your car serviced, you know, mm, or you mm-hmm. could buy a steering wheel cover, you mm-hmm. know. But if you go to the flagship <laughs> one in Center City, like you can go and walk in and walk out with like teen coilovers for your car or a car O seat or, you know, an HKS exhaust. Like, you know, like in stock, yeah. which is wild. That is cool. That is really cool. Um, what about the um, what about the culture? You mentioned it a little bit with a lot of the traffic having our aftermarket wheels. Did you see any like shops there? I know there's always like these famous you know, JDM tuners, like <laughs> June racing yeah. or spoon or like whatever. Did you see any like hole in the wall shops or anything like that? We, we definitely did. That's, that also like really surprised me. And I, I would say definitely different from the States is that you would, you just be, I don't know, anywhere, right. Just mm-hmm. driving down the road and there'd just be a hole in the wall shop, like garage with the door open. And I remember like going by one, in Osaka, it was just just a random street in the city. There's a Ferrari 355 sitting outside, a 993 Turbo, which is like a mm. you know, super rare. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was I think it was a Diablo, like in the shop, and like a couple more Porsches, <laughs> and they're like crammed into this little shop. I was wow. like, that's one thing. It's like in huh. Japan, like space is at a premium everywhere, right? And so like they'll be like the most incredible things like jammed in this little space. There is one guy who had like a motorcycle workshop where he did like custom motorcycles and the shop was like eight feet wide and 20 feet deep. And that was it. And it was just like there's just enough room left (laughs) from like all the parts and crap he had in there for him like sit in there. And it was like a glass, you know, entryway. So you could like just like look in. (laughs) <laughs> and he's just like sitting there wrenching on one bike and there's just enough room for him in that bike. Um, oh, so there's like there's like that type of stuff like everywhere. Um, we oh, happen across cool. like one crazy um, exotic dealership that in in Tokyo. Um, again, blank on the name of this, this shop, but they had in inventory an F40, two F50s. One of which was an F50 race car. What? Um, they had, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had. What? I think I may have Diab- actually seen a video on this shot, they had a, by the way. A Mura, well, I'll give you, well, they'll be the photos up. They had a Mura, whatever, like, they made some special edition, like, end of cycle run of the Mura. I didn't even know that was a thing. That it has, like, a wing on it and stuff. They had a Diablo SV. Oh, what was they had other they had like they had a, like a Zonda there, just like what? wild wild stuff uh, like a, a Carrera GT you know um, mm-hmm. what was the, what was the other like icon car that they had? Um, it might it have been like the, like a shop. It was it was like was- nuts. It was like all the like eighties nineties like icon <sighs> supercars. It's it sounds, in inventory, sounds- just like in their yeah. showroom. This sounds like a shop that Larry Chen recently visited, I think, is the video that I saw yeah. on YouTube um, about. I think that he if he visited some exotic dealership in Japan and they were the exclusive like Ferrari dealers of Japan and they were mentioning, you know, Ferrari F40s and that sort of thing. And that's mm. th- th- what? Like, that's so. Cr- so you got to see I haven't seen a Ferrari F40 in person. So was there anything you got to see this stuff in person? Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was nuts. Um, uh, what else? Here's, I'm so I jealous. Took, 
yeah, Pagani Zonda, Pagani Huayra, NSX, NSXR GT. What? Um, a Nissan Z432, which I think is a race car. This is probably the most crazy one for me is they had a Porsche 935 K3, which is this insane race car that Porsche had made um, that I think was a Le Mans car, or that was when they first designed it was for Le Mans, uh, so, which is, you know, it's just like in inventory. Just like mad. Oh, and they had a BMW M1. Like the, the rate, the race car from the eighties, mid engine M1. Oh my God. That's so nuts. I'm doing a quick, uh, Google search here. It's not, I'm not finding it right away, but that is so crazy. I'm pretty sure that. Yeah. I I know that that Larry was doing a whole series on like visiting. I think he visited like spoon and a bunch of other shops. This sounds very, familiar to me that's nuts that you just kind of like stumbled upon that yeah yeah just like you know in the city it so that you would just you'd stumble across like crazy stuff like that quite Mm -hmm. a lot yeah nice so wrapping this up uh, that i'm trying to you know poke and prod and kind of get an idea on, on what it was like for you what else what's like one last thing that you learned that maybe subverted your expectations of Japan. Uh, <laughs> Maybe it doesn't have to be car related, but just yeah. in general. Yeah. What? All right. I, I have two for you. I give you one car one and one okay. just j- Japanese culture thing, which right. blew my mind. Um, the car <laughs> one it. is that I saw more like cool JDM cars on the Air Force base than in the whole rest of Japan. So I, I visited <laughs> okay. a buddy who's in the Air Force and he's like, oh, dude, there's tons of cars on base. Like all the guys get them right. And I was like, oh, sweet. And I, yeah, I figured there'd be a few. And it's like we were on the base for like two minutes and I saw like three R34 GTRs, you know, two FDR X7s. And I'm like, I'm, you know, looking (laughs) all around like a madman. And he's like, he's like, all right, like, you know, later on, we'll go to this. uh, We'll go to the parking garage because there's like a garage where you can park your stuff for like, you know, a month at a time and Mm -hmm. whatever. And it's covered. You know, it's a garage. He's like, that's where all the guys park their cars. And so we go in this garage and it is a full, it's like a five story parking complex. Every single space is like a sick Japanese car. (laughs) There's like a gen two NSX. First thing we see, like there's like every generation of like Evo Lancer and white lined up next to each other. (laughs) You know, there's like autos and AZ ones. There's, just like anything you can think of that you'd want to import from Japan was in this garage. It was Ugh. insane. And he's like, yeah, man, like, you know, that, and that's, that's the exchange rates really good, you know? So American soldiers come over or airmen, whatever you call them. And they're making like your average American salary, but there it's like, you know, buys 50% more than it would in America. So they're like doing well there and they're like all 20 something year old dudes. So, yeah, they buy up all the cool JDM cars <laughs> while they're there. And they get to import one free back to America if they get, you know, relocated back to America. So, yeah, they all buy one. It was it was wild. It, that That's was so crazy. That kind of blew my mind. I saw so much on that base. Uh um, That's really cool. Yeah. What was the uh, non-car? So, the thing non-car that thing is like walking around Tokyo, I'm like trying to throw something out. I'm like, Jim, who's my friend. I was like, Jim, like, why are there no trash cans? Like, I haven't seen a trash can in an hour, right? And we're in, like, Center City, and there's there's no mm. trash anywhere, right? Like, Japan's super clean. There's no trash. I'm like, you know, where's all the public trash cans? Mm-hmm. And he's like, there aren't any. Mm. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, said, so in the, in the 90s, there is a terrorist attack by an extremist, like, Japanese Christian group or something like that. And they put this uh, like biohazard thing in these trash cans and it ended up killing like quite a few people in like subways and stuff. Right. Mm. And so Japan government uh, response to it was, we're just going to get rid of all the trash cans. Wow. And so they got rid of all the public (laughs) trash cans. There are no, no public (laughs) trash cans. I had to go into a Starbucks wow. to throw something out. That's crazy. And, and is there trash on there, the ground? There's no start? trash anywhere. I would challenge someone to find any trash 
anywhere on the ground. That's crazy. It's insane. And it's just crazy. like two parts of Japanese culture. It's like one, it's like if they if they do something, they fucking do it. Like mm. they they did it. They got rid of all the trash cans. That was the solution. We'll just that's what we're gonna do. And it's kind of crazy. It's a crazy solution. Mm-hmm. A bit extreme. It's a bit extreme, extreme. <laughs> but they did it. And the other part is that no one litters. Like they all follow the rules. They all That's the crazy thing. Bring bags to take their trash with them. That's a crazy thing. You take away trash cans here in America, people are just gonna be like, nowhere to put it. Just gonna throw it on the ground and it they would don't, be garbage you know, everywhere. They don't even use them when they're there. We don't <laughs> we don't even use them when we're there, you know? You take True. them away. Uh yeah, it's it was uh, it, that was impressive. That was uh, impressive. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that with us. That's really rad. I'm glad you went. I'm living my courtesy <laughs> for you right now. Next time you're coming. <laughs> Next time you're coming to take me with you. Yes. <laughs> All right, Rob. So you are choosing three cars for our classic FMK segment here, where I need to choose to F Mary or kill. The three cars that you're presenting me with. So what do you have in store for this episode? That's right, Dylan. I've got three <laughs> hot ones for you today. I already don't like the way you're smiling. <laughs> nah, it, they're hot ones. They're hot ones. All right. All right. All right. So all right. let's hear it. The segment we're going with is early 2010s all-wheel drive uh, enthusiast cars. Okay. That's our segment. That's our segment. Now, Okay. I'm thinking... Uh, you know, these are cars that you, you know, you're, you're 30 years old now. You lost it after when you're a teen, but you couldn't afford them, you know? Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and now you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to buy, you know, the all wheel drive, you know, awesome thing of, of, of my childhood dreams. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we have got the, of course, Evo X GSR. Yep. Okay. Yep. So last gen of the Evo. Last gen of the Evo. We have got a 14 WRX STI wagon. Okay. And the we wagon. have got a 2013 Audi TT RS. Ah, I was wondering what the third, what the third was going to be. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Here, let me let me send you these uh these bring a trailer uh, links here so you can Perfect. put your eyes on these bad boys. Um. So. The starting with the Evo, you know, a car everyone knows well. Uh, you know, Mitsubishi left the uh, was it 4GE, right? They they left the four the the much beloved 4GE mm-hmm. and went to an aluminum block um, new engine architecture, which uh, you know ruff, ruffled some feathers, but uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it I think it worked out. I think people it ended up working out. So that that thing makes 300 at the you know at the crank, five speed, all wheel mm-hmm. drive. Uh, you look at that amazing uh, you know Evo handling still. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you got the STI wagon. Uh, so I think this is the last gen. You could get the STI in a wagon here in the states. Uh, it's in that awesome like rally blue. Uh, you know the classic color. For Subaru, and this guy's got the EJ25, making uh, making you know a healthy 300 horsepower as well. Mm-hmm. And then we've got mm-hmm. the kind of oddball that I, I think is less known is that 13 TTRS. So mm-hmm. this is Audi TT after the body redesign. What's well, a whole you know whole chassis redesign? It's it's sitting on you know that GTI uh, a Audi A3 you know, architecture, mm. mm-hmm. but all wheel drive, got the, you know, the Quattro all wheel drive. Best part though, is that it's got the five cylinder in it. So yep. the half of an Audi R8 Huracan engine, it's got that five cylinder. Uh, yep. And it's also still offered in a manual six speed. Yo, that's checking a lot of boxes. That's 355 easy. horsepower too. You took two cars that are a yawn fest and then made this a very interesting segment by choosing this, this TT yawn um, fest, huh? <laughs> See, well, th- those are like well, childhood hero cars for me. 
Okay, okay. Well, you know, now I'm showing my age here because I was a little older and, and uh, these these cars killed my childhood heroes, which is the Blob Eye and uh, the oh, Evo 9. so these are the abominations. Now, these are the that... abominations. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I, li- no, not, I like this really, Jet STI. Really. I think... You get the both, wagon. Yeah, I actually think both the Evo and the, w- and the STI have aged well. Um, I think the the Evo X has aged well. And yeah, this is a really cool STI. I wish they did this again. When this first came out, this isn't when it first came out. I think this is like after the facelift. When this first came out, it was very polarized about it being a hatch. But as I've gotten older and Rob more wise, <laughs> I've realized how great of a, of an option it was to have the STI in a, in a, in a wagon. Wise you uh, are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or I should say a hatch. This is technically not a wagon. But um but yeah, so this oh, but the TT Okay, I'm gonna start with the TT. The TT for me, the OG, the first gen TT is a bit of a joke. Straight up. <laughs> uh it is a It is a bit of a joke. It's, yeah. It is a VW golf, right? It, a platform that they dressed up in a not so well way, in my humble opinion. But this kind of throws that all out yeah. and is a total redesign. And it really was really a hairdresser car back then. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. And take that from two uh, hairdressers themselves that own Miatas. Um, it, it really was. Uh, it, you know, it's a Barbie car, too. I remember seeing that a lot when I was when I was uh, when it came out. But anyway, that is not the case for this TT. And it's awesome that this is also in a stick. I'm really curious. This, I'm not crushing the Yachty because at the very least, dude, I'm effing this car at the very least because I'm, I, it's a five <laughs> cylinder, it's six speed. They sound awesome. Door. I have not come close to experiencing a car like this. Dude, it's a two door coupe with all wheel drive. How many two door coupes with all wheel drive are out there? That's, I, I could probably count yeah. on my hands yeah. the number of I those. I think the only other things out there is going to be like, a Huracan and an NSX. Yeah, like that is in and of itself really interesting. Yeah, not crush worthy, right? So now, okay, and now also, you also have- it's the lightest car of the group too, thirty two hundred pounds. That's also the other two are port. The Evo X thirty five fifty and the STI mm. is thirty four. Hmm, interesting. That's good to think about. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to settle on that. I'm gonna f the shit out of this 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 <laughs> TT, right? I'm gonna because I don't I don't know if I'd want to own it long term. I'm not sure not. if it's gonna be like it, it, the the TT for me. You know, it's a two door coupe. This is gonna be your sports car. I don't, I'm not sure if this is like what I want to own in terms of a sports car. Uh, but you're damn straight. I'm taking that thing for a rip once because I gotta know. I gotta know, dude. Uh, and then I gotta know that. It's not worth it, <laughs> but it was worth the drive. <laughs> uh, so now I have to choose between the Evo X, the last gen of the Evo, and the WRX. And now the reason why, Rob, this becomes a difficult choice for me is I, and here here we are, you, you did get me in my nostalgia train. I loved Subaru growing up. I was really? between the two, between the two. Evo versus STI. I was. You're an I was STI team man. STI. I, I wouldn't was peg you STI. for that. Yeah, I wouldn't peg I, you for that. I feel like the Evo is the is the car of class. Uh, yes, and I, although this is before <laughs> vapes, even then I feel like it was the vape car. It was. It definitely became the vape car. Although I'll admit that, but at the time it, w- it did have more of like the blue collar. It. I don't know. Both were obviously in rally, but it. I think Subaru was leaning a lot more on its rally heritage. Uh, the Evos were always more a little bit more about tech mm. uh, than the, than the the STIs. But I'd say of the two, the EJ has not aged well. Ooh, yeah. It was it was an uh, and still is. Yeah, it was a unreliable car at the time, and it is just continue to get more and more unreliable in terms of everyone's perception of it. But the problem, Rob, the problem is you chose 
the hatch. And I'm gonna <laughs> am I gonna have to eat my own words and choose a sedan over a hatch? Because <laughs> th- Rob, sedans are the is is the death of the automobile. Sedans mean like nothing. They represent nothing. Uh, you can't. They're not good at anything. Just commit to the coupe or or have a hatchback on the back of it so you can actually put some stuff in your car. Ah, I'm really torn here. I really am torn. I'm not an Evo X hater, but it's definitely not the Evo that I would want. I'd also argue that this is probably not the STI that I want, but it's, ah, ah, you got me rolling around over here. Ooh, man. I, I feel like I don't have a good choice to, <laughs> to make I'm between these so two. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, going. it's great. This is, this is good. You're making me squirm here. Um, <laughs> okay. Which one do I think is less worthy of being crushed? Less worthy. So more more crushable. Yeah. Okay, actually, let's do that. Which of these is more crushable? Is the Hatch STI more crushable than the Evo X? I think it is. I think... I think it is. <laughs> and but here's that why. engine is going to end up in the junkyard. And here's why. Another. Yeah, you're already halfway in the junkyard with that engine. Okay. I have had a, some uh, some experience with the interiors of these cars. They're a joke. All right. That's two strikes. I know the Evo X isn't much better, but I feel like it's still a step up from the STI. Yeah. Yes. Subaru's always like a decade behind in interior design. <sighs> it's, it's, yeah, it really is. And the Evo X, it, it was a polarizing car at the time. It was still ahead of its time for design, right? You still have a lot of design cues that you see in today's cars from like the grill and the look of the car. I mean, look at the new Subarus. All the WRXs started looking more and more like the Evo X. Mm, that's uh, a good point. That's a good point. It, it, the that, design is it is it has held up well. Yeah. And that drivetrain isn't doesn't have one foot in the garbage can no, already. No, it, it, it doesn't have a it bad really rep. It doesn't. And if I wanted to daily a car of the two, I think I'd rather own, even though it's a sedan, <laughs> I think I'd rather daily the Evo overall, knowing that uh, I'm not a drive away from having to rebuild my engine for the 19th time, right? Like you would with that Subaru. So there I it is. That's a so wise I am decision. marrying, I'm marrying the Evo, and we are taking that STI to the wrecker. I think that's a very Crush wise it. decision there. <laughs> so what, uh, what would you have chosen? Where did I go wrong? I think I'm in the same boat because a big part of me wants that TTRS as a daily. I'd almost, I, uh, oh, I, Mister, I'm gonna daily a coupe. Good for you. Yeah, I don't, man I don't I have, you know, a wife or kids. I don't even have a dog. <laughs> you know? No responsibilities. I could, you know, yeah, crush that car. I would daily a coupe. Um, I feel like, and I haven't driven one, but I am afraid that the like dynamics and chassis tuning of the car would just be abysmal stock mm. from Audi. Like the most boring mm. understeer fest. I will not oversteer power slide at mm. all tuning Mm -hmm. you know that's i would i would be afraid it would be like that and then you Mm -hmm. would have me spending a bunch of money whereas i feel like i could hop in the evo x and just enjoy it and not Mm -hmm. have not for what it is feel the need to spend money on it yeah yeah i look at the evo as a car that i could drive year round and enjoy every i I could drive that to tail the dragon and i could enjoy it at the tail the dragon i could you know Take it on the highway. I'm sure it probably has some, you know, probably doesn't have the most creature comforts and that sort of thing. But it's, I'm, it's a do everything sure. car. It's I'm a sure good it's do better than that STI. Car. I'm sure it's better than that STI. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah, it's a do everything car for sure. Um, dude, what if we both drove that TT and realized that we married the wrong, <laughs> wrong car, dude? Well, if we if we drove it then real then then we'd be cheating so we would be cheating yeah 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 <laughs> I 
to make sure that we sequence that the right way so we're not cheating here, folks. <laughs> All right, let us know down below which uh, which car are you taking down the aisle, right? Which car are you taking home and driving on the daily? You're putting the, the ring on her, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or are you going to enjoy crushing that Evo because you know what? It doesn't have a 4G63 and it. What an abomination. Get this thing out of here. These are all meant for the crusher. I don't know. I just, I'm, not, I'm down in that camp myself. <laughs> oh, man. So after the heavily anticipated release of the 400Z, Nissan has mm. blessed us with a Nismo edition, as they typically do, right? You know, a la 350Z mm-hmm. Nismo, 370Z Nismo. Um, and it seems like they're true to form because both of those cars were, you know, a body kit, a kind of over the top body kit, depending on who you ask, <laughs> some rims. It's a little, a little lower, a little stiffer. They put an exhaust on it. Mm-hmm. And if I remember from the 370Z correctly, slower. Uh, mm. <laughs> I remember the <laughs> magazines inexplicably finding that it was slower. Um, Really? Wow. Because they, you know, Nissan said they had 10 more horsepower. That's marketing. Hmm. And yeah, just kind of like, uh, what's the point, you know, especially hmm. for the premium. So hmm. now we've got the 400Z. And I guess the big question is, aside from the other elephant in the room, is like, what's the point, right? Like, is, is it hmm. worth it? Or am I just buying like an appearance package, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. You got the specs or do I have the specs? Ooh, uh, we prepare all the time. I don't actually have the specs in front of me, but I can riff while you get the specs because that's what we do here. <laughs> I got, I got, nope. don't, don't, don't worry. I got the specs. I'm, I'm prepared. Oh, he's got the specs. I'm he's, prepared. Yeah, you're, you're okay. the only one doing homework for this segment. What am I doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> We've got 20 more horsepower in the form of a different tune. Uh, okay. No hardware changes. Okay. Uh, we've got, as of course, different front bumper, rear bumper, I think side skirts, little spoiler. Uh, looks nicer. Definitely looks better. Yeah, Nissan claims that uh, they have real downforce. All these mods were done with an air, eye to arrow, and so it has mm-hmm. actual downforce now. Um, mm-hmm. And also that some extra cooling, you know, they, they said they changed the pattern of the front grill to increase cooling efficiency. Uh, so they got that going on. They've got some very nice looking uh, Recaros and they, they look like Recaro Sportsters, an excellent seat. So some nice seats on the inside. Mm-hmm. Um, a new Sport Plus driving mode. And uh, overall, just stiffer suspension all around. Stiffer bushings, you know, stiffer dampening, stiffer springs, mm-hmm. all that, all that type of jazz. Um, increased torsional rigidity by two point five percent. So, it's awfully specific. Yeah, um, <laughs> and, and Nissan, Nissan is is aiming this at like this is like your, this is like a, a performance focused car. Like this is a car you take to the track, like right out of the box go to the track mm-hmm. with it. That's mm-hmm. sort of what how they're uh how they're selling this thing. Yep. Even though it's coming with an automatic transmission. Bum, I wasn't, bum, you bum. know, I was gonna wait for that one. <laughs> it's auto only. It's you auto probably only. already know that, but it's it's auto only. It's auto only. What the fuck? What are they doing? What are they doing, Rob? It seems like you're a big Nissan fan. For anyone who's out ever been listening to any of these podcasts it's it's a trend here rob is not the largest nissan uh z fan of the the later generations i do i shit on nissan a lot actually on this show (laughs) and i am gonna support that shitting on in this in this scenario and it's (laughs) i i the reasoning they're saying for the auto is that the bump and power the, the manual transmission can't handle. And, Rob, it's 20 more horsepower, not a whole lot. It's 35 more foot-pounds of torque. That's likely the culprit to not being able to do the manual transmission. But here's what I say to that. I say, bullshit. Don't make 
the car more powerful. It already makes 400 horsepower. Concentrate on like it's only it's only 20 more. Well, it's first, yeah, okay. It, it's like yes. really, they really you they broke it with 20 more, you know, that's 20 how more close we are to the limit to begin with. Like, that's or 34 like, more foot pounds. Yeah, it's not that much more. But if you're gonna say, oh, yeah, like we we're already at the limit and we're crossing the limit, why are they so close the to the limit? Don't cross the limit. Don't cross the well. Why are they so close to the limit? I, when they designed the box, why did they just make it a little bit stronger? I, you know, that's they a knew good they point. were going to make a Nismo version. That's a good point because we'll run with this first. That's a good point because it's a turbo. It's a twin turbo V6. You know, everyone's going to be turning that up to eleven in the aftermarket. Right. Are these transmissions made of glass? Are they going to be blowing you know, up? And in classic Nissan form, they're not going to change this car until they kill the car just like the 370z 350 like it's gonna be this, mm-hmm. it's not gonna get a facelift no. uh it's not gonna get interior design it's not gonna get any more power <laughs> despite it being a freaking turbo car just like turn up the boost yeah. switch you know the compressor wheel around whatever add more power you know it's not like ringing it out of a na motor mm-hmm. they're not gonna do jack with it it's mm-hmm. kind of frustrating Mm-hmm. You know, and especially like right now, like special editions are flying off the shelves. Like they can't sell enough. You know, the, you know the the, mm-hmm. the GR Corolla Marizo is like sold out in five minutes. And then you got the Circuit Edition, which now they've decided to make for a second year, even though they said they're only going to make it for the first model year because they are selling every single one they can make. Why not? Mm-hmm. They're making money. Like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nissan, all right, you know, you're going to make your Nismo, but, like, why Like, why wouldn't you, like, thought ahead and thought, oh, why don't we make, like, 10 different special editions, one every year of this <laughs> thing, and sell them for 70 grand, and everyone's going to buy them? Like, you know, <laughs> why won't they do that? Why won't they just plan ahead and, like, do that? It just it seems asinine. My, what I was saying before, I agree with you there. I think they could probably... You know, they could go through the generations of the Z and they could highlight, you know, the design features that they stole from the generations and they could make special editions of the current Z to favor those over the over the years. They could do some whole like generations package and like this is like the whatever. So there's a lot of opportunity there. 300 ZX twin turbo package and they'll be. The yeah. 280ZX package, and then the 260Z, yeah. and the They'll 240Z, do, like, all these and then the, the Datsun Heritage package. And a slightly different facelift to just accentuate those like designs or whatnot. But I, I digress. Where I was going with this is, okay, let's, let's, you're not buying into as much. I, I agree with where you're coming from, but let's say, let's buy into their, oh, this is a really fragile transmission. We can't go any higher with our horsepower then don't. Don't do that and instead lean into what's happening right now market-wise, kind of like what you were saying with the different uh, special editions, but lean into, not so much with special editions, lean into the driver-focused sports car. Make it stick and you're claiming, you're, you're making all these claims about the arrow, you're making all these claims here, just double down and be like, this is all about the experience. We went back to the nostalgia. Absolutely. It's a nostalgia the, tree. Look at all these different designs that we have in this in this car. Look at the, the, the 300 ZXs in the taillights, the 280s in the front. You know, this we went, this is a pure driving experience. We got a six-speed. this was supposed to be like that pure, we've like, track-oriented car. suspension. Well, not even that, but it's like we've tuned the suspension. We, we've got 100... Pounds of downforce up front. It's it's super slippery. Like I would just make it all that. It's it's a lighter flywheel. Make like it, it's, no, it's yeah, like make all it light, these things. Just, I don't know. Yeah, make it lighter too. Like whatever. Yeah. Put a carbon roof on it or something. Do what everybody else is doing to their cars. Make it a GT three <laughs> of the Nissan Z, but not adding any more power. Just put the money into those things, and I think you would have. It wouldn't have opened to a wet fart. Everyone's like, oh, stick or auto only, whatever. Thrown away, super's better. And I don't think those people are wrong, to be honest. Uh, 
but I think they could have taken this in a totally different direction, doubled down on the nostalgia, doubled down on the purity, Rob. It's the purity. And and I think they could have been successful with that. Instead, they're just like, oh, it's faster, even though this is a slush, slush box automatic. Here you go. Have fun. We're not going to sell shit. I mean, there's <laughs> a, the other press conference when, I don't know, a Nissan designer saying, like, basically the, the product team was like, nah, we can't make the Nismo slower. Because, you know, basically mm. if you... you if they put the manual in the Nismo, it would still be just, slower accelerating than just, the base auto. Then just change, just change the ratios a little bit with the the manual transmission. Just make second gear just that much more long, longer, so your zero to sixty is faster, and then all the rest of those those uh, uh, ratios make them tighter. So it's just like wah ba 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 ba. You're just shifting all over the place because purity, Rob, purity. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what, what's wrong with them. I don't know. I just feel like there's no foresight. If they really were like this transmission is this fragile, they should have backed off the standard Z just a little bit, so they had a little more headroom. I don't think they could afford to back off the standard Z because the standard Z doesn't mm. have anything else going for it. Hmm. Like it, mm. it is the it is a Mustang GT of that car class. Like it's yeah. not, it doesn't. Ha- it's like a Mustang GT base package. Let me clarify. Like it doesn't handle. Mm. It, it it understeers. It's soft. You know. It, it's it's just like got some power <laughs> and some Z heritage. You know. Nissan really. Really, is not it has not done well with this <laughs> from from start to finish from the the standard Z to the the Nismo. I think they've really muffed. It looks good. The pun. Here. It looks way better than the three seventy okay. ever looked. I will say that and the three fifty ever looked. The one thing looked. they nailed. I love the look, even of the standard Z. I think that looks really cool uh, because I'm yeah. fucking a sucker for nostalgia. And design. the interior is nice too. The design yeah. is good. Is nice. Really good. Really good. It's I think nice. they muffed the pun. In most other areas I'm, of, I'm I'm fine with it being on the same chassis, like it being a, a similar mm-hmm. car chassis wise. Mm-hmm. It makes the whole aftermarket thing like way easier. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A lot more knowns. Yeah, they just they just gotta tune like kind of tune the whole thing differently, or at least, or at least like the Nismo gives them that opportunity, right? Yeah. Um, and and yet. You know, then they do the auto thing, and it's and it's not and it's a, yeah. not a DCT. Like it's it's just yeah. a no, torque it's a slush converter. Box. It's just a yeah. You know, it's just your run of the mill auto, and uh, that's on the Nismo. Like re- like I that's mean, on the Nismo. Yeah, yeah, and it, really, it, it's not the slowest auto out there, but also you know, like driving the new G8 series m3 m2 like that's that's a good auto but it's still the slush box auto and you like you know it you know mm. you can mm-hmm. tell mm-hmm. it's interesting 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 which interesting. Which, I, which pissed a lot of people off in bmw world too yeah that they did that and didn't put the dct in you know yeah. the f the f series the f80 or f F80, F90, whatever. The last gen M3, M4 had a DCT, and the you know the current one they went to the torque converter. It's just curious because it feels like we're going backwards with the performance of like version of the cars, right? I think, I think at least in that transmission conversation, you're seeing manufacturers not want to invest in um, mm. developing these transmissions electric, because they know yeah. they're not you yeah. know they're, they're useless as useless as the internal combustion engine is going to be yep yep why spend money developing them so why spend money de- you know developing their, the dct to handle yeah. more power yep. when it's like all right we have this one already mostly done let's just use that mm-hmm. we know it handles the power the torque converter means that everything else gets uh you know less shock or whatever mm-hmm. you know it 
we have this on the shelf. We're going to use it because we're not going to keep developing the DCT. You know what, Rob? And like I could Nissan, make... Nissan could have like they have a DCT in the GTR. Obviously, yeah. you can't use that one. It's like just too expensive. But yeah, they had the tech to go ahead and make one for that car, and they were like, mm-hmm. they did it. Yeah. You know, I could I could take this two ways. I could blame this all on electric cars because that's where all their R and D and development dollars are going towards. Or I could also blame this on everything has got too much power and you need more of those basic transmissions to like handle it or spend a lot of money developing like a DCT or a manual that can handle, you know, these higher power vehicles. And it's like, ah, it's just whatever side of the fence you're on in this situation, whether you want to be the purist, you want that stick or, you know, you're anti-electric, you, you got a reason to be annoyed <laughs> in this scenario. <laughs> With, with Nissan. Dastards. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. Do you think there's any way that Nissan can turn this around? Like a, a refresh to get the Z back on track to, to perform as well as it they looks? They should just make another like special edition of it. Hmm. and and make the car that enthusiasts want you know which kind of sounds like it's the nismo but with the manual you know mm-hmm. um maybe you know take the power out lighten it a little bit or something you know, take some sound editing out you know mm-hmm. less speakers in it whatever but uh, gt3 the z y- yeah gt3 the z gt3 the z <laughs> as tired as i am like of all the special editions like yeah like if that's the I, way to get the car you want, you know, and it is, it's cool, whatever, like the go back to the Corolla. Cause I think that's probably the cheapest thing out there that that's been chock full of special editions. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, a circuit edition is cool. Like you get, you get a carbon fiber roof, right? Like you get mm-hmm. a carbon roof on a freaking hatchback. Like that's cool. Um, that's rad. And the Marizo, it's like, you get a hatchback with no rear seats and no speakers in it, like, or very, you know, uh, like it is as stupid and impractical and expensive as it is. We all still want it. We all still want to see it. We're all like, yeah, what would happen if they like took out the back seats and like turned this hatchback in a totally impractical race car? <laughs> like, yeah, we all love it. So like, and, and everyone's buying it and the money's there right now. So like mm-hmm. cap lies on the, on that, you know, last you saw hurrah. Two at Palmer. We went to Palmer Motorsports Park yeah. for track day. We saw two of them. Yeah. We got to see Marisa there. This is pretty, pretty it wild. Tearing it up. Cool. All right. Comment down below. Is Nismo uh, edition? No, it, no. Actually, no. There is no question there. I was about to say, is the Nismo edition as bad as everyone's making it out to be? It is. Uh, just support that uh, down below in the comments. <laughs> I don't want to actually don't want to like shit on it that bad, but it's just like. It's a discipline. I don't know. I yeah. I hate to say it's it. just it's, it seems it's like a poor marketing decision. Like they don't understand the enthusiast market, or maybe they do, and we're like this tiny, tiny little baby segment, Dylan, and it's just <laughs> all the normies who just like don't actually, you know, yeah, aren't really in the cars. They just well, we're we're about to find out, Rob. The they'll vote with their dollars. We'll see what happens. They're all they're all gonna sell. You think so? Yeah. I think they're not gonna I don't think they're gonna sell. I think I think they're all gonna move. Not as fast as they would with the manual, but they're all gonna move. At, mm. And with a ten thousand dollar dealer markup. The world we live in. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I think that brings us to the end of yet another edition of the early apex so thanks for listening thanks for listening guys hope you had as much fun as we did (laughs) stay tuned we got more episodes coming out and we're also doing a lot more stuff on the social media whether it's tiktok instagram uh youtube shorts or whatnot so check it out you name it check it out those things as well all right till next time guys See ya.